Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this question, we have been given this discrete common source amplifier, and for this amplifier, we have been asked to find the largest allowable amplitude of the input signal. So for the given MOSFET amplifier, we have been already given some MOSFET parameters, and at the operating signal frequency, this capacitor acts as a short circuit. So to find the maximum allowable input signal. First of all, we need to find the voltage gain, and using the small signal analysis, we can find the voltage gain. But to find this voltage gain and to draw a small signal model, first of all, we need the value of the transconductance, and that can be found using the DC analysis. So for the DC analysis, all these capacitors will act as a open circuit. So if you observe over here, then the MOSFET is biased in the drain feedback configuration. And for this configuration, this voltage VDS is equal to VGS is equal to VDD minus ID times RD, or in this case, it is equal to 15 minus ID times RD, where here this RD is equal to 10 kilo ohm. Also, when the MOSFET is operating in the saturation region, then this drain current ID can be given as half times mu n times c u x times w by l times v g s minus v t whole square. So here we have been already given the values of this device parameter as well as the threshold voltage. So in the saturation, this drain current I D is equal to 0.25 milliampere per volt square divided by two times this v g s minus 1.5 whole square. And in this expression, let us put the value of VGS. And if you put the value of VGS, then we can write the strain current ID is equal to 0.25 divided by 2 milliampere per volt square times 15 minus ID times RD minus 1.5 whole square. And if we further rearrange this expression, then we can write 8000 ID. That is equal to 13.5 minus ID times RD whole square, and here the value of RD is equal to 10 kilo ohm. That means if we further rearrange this expression, then we can write 8000 ID that is equal to 182.25 minus 27 times 10 to the power 4 times ID plus 10 to the power 8 times I D square, or we can say that 10 to the power 8 times I D square minus 27.8 times 10 to the power 4 times I D plus 182.25 that is equal to zero. So if we solve this expression, then we will get the two values of the drain current. The one value is 1.72 milliampere. While the second value is 1.058 milliampere. Now, with the first value of the drain current, if we calculate the value of VGS, then it will come out as negative. That means, in that case, the MOSFET will not operate in the saturation region. That means, the value of the drain current ID should be equal to 1.058 milliampere. And with that value, let us find the value of the VGS. So this voltage VGS can be given as 15 minus I D times R D. That is equal to 15 minus 1.058 milliampere times 10 kilo ohm. That is equal to 4.42 volt. That means the value of the VGS is equal to 4.42 volt. And once we know the value of the VGS, then we can find the value of the transconductance. Because this transconductance can be given as mu n times c u x times w by l times v g s minus v t. That is equal to 0.25 milliampere per volt square times 4.42 minus 1.5. That is equal to 0.73 millisiemens. So this is the value of the transconductance at the operating point. 
And once we know the value of the trans conductance, then using the small signal analysis, we can easily find the voltage gain. So for this small signal analysis, let us replace all these coupling capacitors by the short circuit. And this DC voltage source will act as a zero. And then after, we can replace this MOSFET by the small signal model. So if you see the equivalent circuit, then it will look like this. So here, this RF is equal to 10 mega ohm, while this RD is equal to 10 kilo ohm. And here, this load resistor RL is also equal to 10 kilo ohm. Now here, since we have been given the value of the early voltage, that means there has to have some finite output resistance. Because if you are aware, then this output resistance can be given as 1 divided by lambda times ID. Or we can say that it is equal to VA divided by ID. So here, this VA is equal to 50 volt, while this train current ID is equal to 1.058 milliampere. That means the output resistance is equal to 47.25 kilo ohm. So in this case, since this feedback resistor RF is in mega ohms, so this voltage gain AV is approximately equal to minus GM times this RD parallel, RL parallel, R0. That is equal to minus 0.73 millisiemens times 10 kilo ohm in parallel with 10 kilo ohm in parallel with 47.25 kilo ohm. That is equal to minus 0.73 millisiemens times 4.521. That means the voltage gain is approximately equal to minus 3.3. So this is the voltage gain of this amplifier. Now once we know this voltage gain, then we can easily find the maximum allowable value of the input signal. So as you are aware, when the MOSFET is used as an amplifier, then it is used in the saturation region. And to operate the MOSFET in the saturation region, this VDS should be greater than or equal to VGS minus VT. So here, this VDS contains two components. One is the DC component and second is the AC component. So in this case, this AC component is the output voltage. Similarly, this VGS also contains the two terms. One is the DC biasing voltage VGS and second one is the input signal. That means the condition will be VDS plus V0 should be greater than or equal to VGS plus VI minus VT. Now here, this output voltage V out is equal to minus AV times V in, where this negative sign indicates there is a phase reversal at the output. Now the worst case will occur when the V in is positive and the V out is negative, because from this expression, when the V in is positive, then the V out will be negative. So in the worst case, we can write this condition as VDS plus minus AV times VI max is greater than or equal to VGS plus VI max minus VT. And here, since the DC voltage VDS and the VGS are equal, so they will get cancel out. That means from this we can say that this VI max times 1 plus AV should be less than or equal to VT. That means VI max should be less than or equal to VT divided by AV plus 1. That means VI max should be less than or equal to 1.5 divided by 3.3 plus 1, which is roughly equal to 0.35. That means the maximum allowable value of this input signal is equal to 0.35. That means the peak value of the input signal should be less than or equal to 0.35 volt. Then and then only the MOSFET will operate in the saturation region. And in that case, we can use this MOSFET as an amplifier. That means from this we can say that for the given question, the answer is 0.35 volt.